Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of the Podiatry Legends Podcast. The podcast is designed to help you feel, see, and think differently about the podiatry profession. Now, if you haven't checked out the Podiatry Legends website, please go to podiatrylegends.com. And that's where I put a lot of the episodes, even though they all go onto all the podcast platforms. Today is another solo episode. Since starting this podcast in 2019, January 2019 to be exact, I've never done two solo episodes back to back. Usually there's a few guests in between, majority of the times they're the podiatrists, but I like to bring some guests in who are not podiatrists, just to sort of spice things up a little bit. And usually those guests have some information that I know will be very useful for podiatrists in business and in their careers. So the reason I wanted to do another solo episode is during the week a few days ago I shot a video for my YouTube channel Tyson E Franklin if you haven't checked it out very easy to find and it was titled more glimmers and less triggers will make for a happier life so I uploaded that a few days ago I was so happy not so much that I was super happy with wow Tyson you did a great video but I was so happy with that particular topic that I came across it when I did because when you understand what glimmers are, and you know that if you can get more glimmers in your life, you are going to be much happier. So I wanted to dedicate this episode again about looking for glimmers and, and explaining what they are, how can you, how you can use them in your life and in your career, and I think you'll be much happier when you actually understand this concept. So let me explain what this is all about. So like I said, I only just recently learned about this term called a glimmer, which is the opposite of something you would have heard called a trigger. Now, glimmers are often tiny, insignificant moments in your day that bring you happiness, a bit of joy, peace, and gratitude. They put a smile on your face. Glimmers will spark positive emotions, whereas a trigger sparks negative ones and usually because it's something that has happened in the past then when something then happens in the present it triggers negative emotions from the past now like i said before glimmers make you feel good and they put a smile on your face and the more you look for them the more you will notice them and the fewer triggers you will encounter because we tend to see what we actively seek and we would have all heard people say before if you look for the negative in anything you will find it But if you stop and you look for the positive, you will find that as well. And it's important to note too, that glimmers are not massive monumental moments in your life, like graduating from university, getting married, having children. They are much smaller micro moments and experiences. And as soon as they occur, you instantly feel good. And because they make you feel good, that is why I wanted to talk about it on the podcast. Because I I would really hate for this subject to go unnoticed by the profession. Like I said, on the YouTube channel, at the moment, there's probably only been about 20 or 30 people that have actually viewed that over the last couple of days. Whereas I know on the podcast, hundreds and hundreds of people listen to every single episode. So I know more people are going to learn about this. So let's go through a few examples. Something as simple as a beautiful sunset is a glimmer. Experiencing those amazing colors and Best of all about a sunset, no two sunsets are the same. So every time you actually see a sunset, that can actually be a glimmer moment. That can actually put a smile on your face. It can actually make you feel good. Another one is tasting your favorite fruit. Now, I don't know about you, but that first mango of the season, I don't think there is anything like it. Now, I couldn't eat mangoes day in, day out. They'd they'd make me sick. Also, uh, make me go to the bathroom a lot too. But when you haven't had a mango for a long period of time or... A piece of fruit that you absolutely love and you bite into it for the first time, that is a glimmer moment. Also, the warmth of the sun on a really, really cool day is a glimmer moment. Same thing as if it's a really hot day and you feel a cool breeze. That is a glimmer moment because straight away it makes you feel better. Certain smells create glimmering moments as well. Like I know for myself personally, when there hasn't been a lot of rain for a while and all of a sudden... It rains lightly and you smell the rain on the road. That is a glimmer moment. But also if you go to your backyard and you know that one of your neighbours has got a barbecue and they're cooking onions, that smell of onions, I think, for me, is a glimmer moment. When you walk past certain restaurants, the aroma that comes out of those restaurants can be glimmer moments. Like I'm a fan of barbecue. 
So whenever I smell anybody smoking any form of meat or any form of barbecue, man, for me, that is 100% a glimmer moment. Seeing a rainbow is also a glimmer moment. My daughter sent a photo the other day and it was the most amazing, perfect rainbow I have ever seen. As soon as I saw the photo, I just put, oh my God, that is amazing. Actually, it's that good. When I do the show notes for this on the podiatrylegends.com website, I will put a photo of that particular rainbow. I'll tell you right now, as soon as you look at that rainbow, if that does not make you feel good just looking at that picture, there's something wrong with you. Okay, I'll keep moving on. For other people, just hearing a baby laugh is a glimmer moment. I know some women that have had children, yeah, when they smell the top of a baby's head, to them, that is just a magical moment. For me, it's just the smell of another head, but that's why we're all different and we all see glimmers differently. And you've heard the term, stop and smell the roses. It's because that is a glimmer moment. When you buy your partner flowers, the first thing they'll do usually is notice the really vibrant colors. They'll look at the flowers and they go, oh, they look absolutely beautiful. The next thing they do is they will smell it. So both of those things, the sight and the smell of flowers are glimmer moments. And this is why people will buy themselves flowers. That's why some people will always have flowers in their office. Some people will have flowers at home because they are glimmer moments. When they see those things, it makes them feel good. For other people, it's as simple as smelling their morning coffee or that first sip of tea. I know some people, they will go to a particular coffee shop and they know when they get to that coffee shop, the person who's actually serving them will serve them not only the coffee, not only do they smell the coffee, but the barista will give them a really big smile. And to them, that's a number of glimmer moments all in one particular place. Hearing birds chirp in the morning is a glimmer moment. Where I live here, as soon as the sun comes up and there's a lot of bushland around us, all you can hear is birds chirping. And I must admit, when you're up doing your morning walk and you're sort of trudging down those tracks and you can hear the birds chirping, I actually really enjoy that. So to me, that is a glimmer moment. Even hearing your favorite song on the radio or just playing some of your favorite music, when you hear those things, or when you hear those songs, they are all glimmer moments. Now, some people's glimmer moment when it comes to music might be completely different to others. So don't judge other people. And a final example I want to give is just watching a full moon. When you're standing back and you're just looking at a full moon, I've never seen anyone look at a full moon and go, yeah, that makes me feel terrible. Never happens. It's the same as if it's a really clear night and the stars are all shining. Nobody can look up at that and sort of go, yeah, no, that makes me feel terrible. So if you stop every now and then and enjoy the small pleasures of life, the, the glimmers, it will be good for your mental health and your well-being, and it will definitely reduce stress. You should make it a habit of trying to notice the glimmers around you every day. And the more you do it, the more you'll notice them. And it will block out the negative triggers. I mentioned that right at the beginning. And you don't need to be chasing these things. All you need to do is just open your eyes. They are all around you. Your mood will improve. You will feel more motivated. And you will achieve more. Goals are easier to attain when your stress is low and your motivation is high. I was once told that whenever I felt stressed or overwhelmed or yeah, had problems sleeping, just there was a lot going on in my mind, that I should close my eyes and I should go to my happy place. Now, for me, it was a particular strip on the Gold Coast uh, in an area called Hollywell. Spent a lot of time there as a kid and I absolutely loved it. And I still love it to this day. And every time I go to the Gold Coast, I will normally go for a drive to Hollywell and I'll sit there on this park bench just looking out at the water under the shade of these big pine trees. And I listen to everything that's going around me. I listen to the birds. I, I listen to the water running up along the, along the beach. And it is just a magical area for me. But now that I think about it, the reason it is my happy place is because of the number of glimmers that it actually holds. It's the sunshine when I'm there. Like I said before, it's the large pine trees. It's the cool breeze. Sometimes you'll hear the breeze and it's going through the pine trees and it, and it makes a distinct noise. It's also the smell of the salt water and the sound of like the seagulls in the background. Also, like I said, the sound of the waves just running up onto the beach, I can close my eyes and as soon as I picture that, it puts a smile on my face. So you need to find your happy place. 
a place where you know where there are a lot of glimmers. Where I currently live now in Cairns, there's a lot of walking tracks. I mean, miles and miles of walking tracks surrounded by really tall trees, thick greenery, lots of palms. There's also a lot of birds and wildlife. And every time I go for a walk, I feel amazing. Now, I used to think it was just you know, the endorphins that were created from the exercise. However, I know now that it's also the glimmers I experience when I'm walking around. Yes, I get to hear the breeze through the trees and I love looking at the scenery and how thick and green everything is. And every time I see a scrub turkey go running past me, I don't know, for some reason it puts a, puts a smile on my face. I don't know if it's because I find them interesting or my wife can't stand them and I just find that funny. But anyway, but as I'm walking down through the tracks, all of a sudden there's a stream that runs through uh, where I live as well. And it follows the path of the walking tracks, which then goes down to a large lagoon. And when I'm down at the large lagoon, all of a sudden, there's this big open area and there's all these ducks there. And you can hear the ducks quacking away. But also, like I did a, a video on my YouTube channel a while back just about how feeding ducks makes you feel good. That is also a glimmer moment. So every now and then, I will go and grab some bread. I will walk down to the local creek. I will sit there and I'll actually feed ducks because it makes me feel good. So feeding ducks is definitely a glimmer moment. So getting back to my walk, as I'm walking around this area, and it's also crossing paths with other people. The thing I like about smiling at people is it costs you nothing to do it. And I must admit, when I'm walking along, every time I smile at someone, I would say 90% of the time, people will smile back and we both feel better for doing that. And I think that is a glimmer moment. Yes, occasionally you'll smile at someone and they will give you a bit of a frown or they will just look the other way and totally ignore you. Yep, you know what? That's on them. It's not on me and it's not on you. If you want to give out smiles, give them out every day. So when it comes to glimmers, I think you should use all five senses. What can you see? What can you hear? What can you smell? What can you feel? And also, what can you taste? And if you want to experience even more glimmers, put your phone down and look around you. Spend time talking with your partner. Spend time with friends that make you laugh and that make you feel good. And I don't think we can actually overdose on glimmers. So I think you should go out there and overindulge as much as you can. Like I said, they are all around you. Sometimes we need to switch off technology Get away from our TV sets. Put our phones down. Like I said, spend time with family, friends. Go for walks. Just really embrace what's around you. And I tell you right now, I've got a friend of mine who's a psychologist over in the States, Dr. Dave Wyman. He's been on this podcast uh, as well. I catch up with him every year. And he said something a few years ago that in his diary, I think it's two or three times a day, he blocks out 10 minutes. And that 10 minutes is he gets up leaves his office, walks out the front door, and he goes for a walk around the block. And he just says that 10-minute walk around the block, when he gets back to the office, just totally recharges him, you know, him, recharges his thinking, and he feels so good. And I think what would be happening with Dr. Dave when he's doing this as well, is as he's walking around the block, he's probably coming across multiple glimmer moments. Like I said, it's not just the endorphins you get from the exercise. It's what you see and everything that's going on around you. So I, I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you get something from it. I hope you note down, even if you put it in your diary, look for more glimmer moments. And I think the more glimmer moments you'll find, the better you're going to feel. Everybody around you is going to feel better. And you never know that you may become a glimmer moment in somebody else's life. The people that you work with, when they turn up at work, they want to see an employer or they want to have colleagues that they work with that are positive, that actually create glimmering moments for them, not triggers for them. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, I hope you get something from this. Would love your feedback. If you enjoyed this episode, please send me an email, Tyson at podiatrylegends.com. Tell me what you thought of this particular subject. Because like I said, I think it is really important. I think you should encourage podiatry friends, even family that know nothing about glimmers, get them to listen to this episode and start looking for those things in life that make them happy, that put a smile on their face. Okay, that's it for me this week. I want you to look after yourself, look after your family, and I will talk to you again next week. Bye for now.
So I know this podcast episode has ended, but there was another glimmer moment that I came across that I thought was really worth sharing. And that was picking up the phone and talking to someone that you haven't spoken to for a while, especially if you've been really good friends, especially really good friends in the past and you haven't spoken to each other for a while, phone them up and just say hello. For you and for them, that will be a glimmer moment that will put a smile on your face. So think about a close friend, could be a family member that you haven't spoken to for a while. Go and pick up the phone and give them a call. I remember many years ago, I'd heard about picking up the phone and ringing somebody that you hadn't spoken to for a while. And there was a friend of mine, a podiatry friend, and we had grown apart. Not for any particular reason. We, I had moved from the Gold Coast. And anyway, a lot of years had passed, and I'd heard this thing about phoning a friend. So I phoned him up, and I left a message for him. Now, he didn't call me back, which, which was fine. But anyway, about nine months later... His wife rang me and she said, I've got some bad news. Just want to let you know that Chris has passed away. Now, Chris wasn't that much older than me. He was only 42 at the time when he passed away. And she said, I just wanted to let you know that he did get your message. He did listen to it. It put a huge smile on his face and he meant to call you back, but he never got around to it. And that just absolutely cut me up. So that's the last thing I want to share with you on here is... If you've got a friend or family member that you haven't spoken to for a while, you know that if you phone them, you know that if you talk to them, it'll be a glimmer moment for them and it'll be a glimmer moment for you. Just go and do it. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.